When it comes to real estate, things are always changing. And the last two years, we saw a lot of uncertainty and high prices. Buyers were forced to make decisions that maybe they really didn't want to, and the pressure was put on the buyers. But we have seen that flip-flop, and now the pressure is put on the sellers to make the deals happen. As rates rise, uh, inventory rises, well, buyers have more control, more leverage, and frankly, they have more options. Welcome back to the channel. It's Rich Brecklin, your Arizona real estate agent. Today, we're going to go over what we're seeing in the market right now in early November and what we saw in October and really what the future holds for Phoenix Metro. You know, if you're thinking about buying or selling or just generally curious, definitely reach out my team and I, we would love to help. My contact info is in that description. Now this video I'm editing myself, so I'm not going to promise you any uh, fancy graphs, charts, uh, or sound effects. Now, one thing that is holding true right now is the amount of active single family detached. Now, that's one thing I really focus on is the single family detached and active properties. I, I look at coming soon, but I like to use the same benchmark and we're holding steadily right around, you know, 17,000. And I think at one point I saw it get to 17,400, but you know, we jumped up it stayed there and really that lack of inventory, and I say lack, even though we had a bunch, you know, historically for October, we see around 10,000 new listings hit the market. However, this past October, we saw a record low with just over 7,000 properties hit the market in October with almost 200 coming soon. So that lack of new inventory in October really helped keep these, you know, these price declines in check. Now I can only imagine if you know, that lack of, you know, buyer interest and we had well above normal inventory, if that would have happened, you know, I, I really would have felt for sellers then because then they would be at a bad spot. However, it's not all doom and gloom for some of you sellers out there. And, but we'll get to you in a second. Right now I'm talking about my buyers, my buyers who are, mostly are relocating here. So many of my clients come from all over the country because they're looking to move to, you know, Phoenix Metro. I mean, I get it. We did the same thing. So why not? However, you know, when interest rates started to rise, we saw it across the board, you know, and still, uh, pending contracts are down, home sales are down, closings are, everything is down in that regard. In May, we saw the peak of prices hit. And those are homes that obviously were under contract in April or March when rates, you know, they weren't doing what they're doing now. And then in June, we started to see that decline and that has happened since. Uh, you know, obviously rates affect a lot, but right now we're starting to see, you know, some buyers kind of get used to that. And I think, you know, most buyers are understanding, all right, the rates are what the rates are. We're not seeing a lot of crazy fluctuations. Even though last week we did see a nice dip. So hopefully some of you, if you are in the buying market, were able to get locked in, get under 7% and get that taken care of. However, we're also seeing sellers start to understand that a seller concession, rate buy down, whatever you want to use it for, um, is becoming more of the norm. October sales, 44% of transactions had a seller concession, average around $7,000. So far for November, the average amount of seller concession is right around $9,000. Now, depending on your financing and what you need, um, honestly, I like to get 3% seller concession to buy that rate down, depending on, you know, I guess, client by client basis, right? Depending on what they need, but typically we can get that rate down at a good spot, really affect that payment versus getting 3% off list price, but why not do both? And if you're a buyer out there, you know, and if you work with me, one thing I'd like to do, and if we're looking at different properties and so between others, you know, I go to the tax records, I see, all right, how much appreciation do they have in this home? And this sellers, this is where I'm gonna get to you. So sellers, as we head into 2023, you know, right now we're still seeing positive appreciation, but really that is banking on the appreciation that you've acquired over the last year or two. Um, into 2023, we're probably gonna see a negative appreciation year over year. Now, if you've bought your home in the last year or two, honestly, I would not sell it. But most of the homeowners here have owned their home more than two years. Appreciation rates based on sales price per square foot through the MLS are, you know, two years is plus 33%, three years plus 60%, four years plus 68%, five years plus 84.8%. So sellers, when you're looking at these numbers and you're getting discouraged, you know, don't try and go back in time and chase what isn't there. 
look at what your home is worth, where it needs to be, and the appreciation that you're going to get when selling it when it comes to pricing your home in today's market. Don't look back and don't think of what you missed out on. Look at the investment you made those years prior and look at what you can get for it now. Again, it's a case by case basis, depending on why it is you are selling and what you want to do with that money when you do sell. Do you want to stay here? Do you want to buy something new? Do you want to do a 1031 exchange or do you want to buy anywhere in the country? Now, if you do, uh, thankfully I have colleagues literally all over the country, I can put you in touch with them if this is an investment property for you or you just wanna get out of the desert and head somewhere cooler, you know, let me know. We can definitely put you in touch with the right people. And I'm gonna put this chart up right now showing the Cromford Report again everything is not trending in a seller's market. And I know we've talked about before being balanced, but it really, it feels more of a buyer's market. And honestly, it is a buyer's market in a lot of places. And by 2023, will we will be in a buyer's market here in Phoenix Metro. Like I said, active listings are up under contract and pending are down. Sales are down, sales per year down. Average days on market for homes that have sold are up. Average days on market for active homes is up. Um, and then month supply of inventory is also up. So at one point we were, you know, just a few weeks. It was taking, you know, about 10 days to sell a home, if that. And now we have over four months of inventory in some places. So we're seeing that again, balance, but leaning toward buyer's market. And I believe we will see a strong buyer's market moving forward. Another thing to look at is listing success rate. We're seeing that fall more and more. We're almost at 63%. We're 62.7% of listing success rate. So out of every 100 homes that are listed, 62.7 actually sell. So what does this mean if you are a buyer? Should you wait? Should you wait for prices to hit rock bottom? And just like when sellers, you know, over the last two years, they kept waiting and waiting and waiting for prices to get to the peak. Well, we only know when the peak happens when prices start to fall. And just like we only know when the bottom happens when prices start to rise. Again, it depends. Why are you looking to buy a home? Are you looking to move here? Are you looking for a second home? Now, for some of you second home buyers, depending on what your situation is, can you afford to wait? And I mean, personally, do you want to wait so you can get you know, maybe a better deal? Um, but what does that deal look like? Or would you rather get a home now so you can enjoy it? Again, it's everyone is different. I'll never talk someone into to buying or selling only if it fits what they're looking for. But like I said, I mean, my family and I, we are in the market actively searching for a home that exactly what we're looking for. And yes, I will pay a higher rate, but I guarantee I'm getting a buyer or a seller concession to buy down my rate. So I don't have to worry about that as much. And I know I'm not going to have to compete with 15 to 20 other offers like I was if I was buying a year ago. So again, I'm weighing out the pros and cons, understanding I will most likely re refinance in two years or so. God, <laughs> I hope so. Um, but that's how it is for us. But again, weigh those pros and cons out, whether it makes sense to take action now or to wait. And same for sellers. You know, do you want to wait or do you want to capitalize on your market or on your investment now? Depend. Just depends on what it is you need in this market. And then when we look at where we are today versus a year ago, you know, active listings for sale, and this is total across the board, is up 162.8% from a year ago. Listings under contract is down 44%. Uh, the median sales price is up 4.4%. Uh, closed sales is down 43%. Again, a lot of that, you know, the monthly sales, the appreciation is there from stuff that has been acquired, you know, a year, 12 to eight months ago. What we're seeing in the last, you know, four or five, six months is that number trending downward. So again, into 2023, that will probably be a negative. So if you've bought a home in the last two years, hold on to it for a while, unless you absolutely have to sell. But if you are looking to move here, please reach out. We would love to help you love to make that transition as smooth as possible, just like I have for my other clients and how we did for ourselves. It's Rich Brecklin, Real Broker. I'll see you on the next one.